Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, Sister Jan. Happy Sabbath to you, Brother Campbell. And happy Sabbath to the congregation as well. Yes. And also, those of you on the wide world web. Yes, it's happy really Sabbath. a privilege and a pleasure to be in God's house on Amen. this most beautiful day to study God's word. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, it is a privilege indeed to study the word of God. Certainly. And then to come and um, share it with those who are looking on. We say welcome, welcome to you. We pray that you had a great week in the name of Jesus. And um, as we go through the lesson, um, if you have any comments also, we believe you can share it. We thank you for what is happening in Jesus' name. Amen. And what is our lesson study this week? Uh, signs of divinity. Amen. Signs of divinity. Before we go further, let us bow our heads. Amen. Even as we approach God's throne. Oh, Father, what in heaven, we thank you once again. We thank you that during this week, we had the opportunity of studying signs of divinity. Yes. We ask that now you would be with us. You would bless us. You would help us to understand what you set out to teach us. May the lessons resonate in our minds. And may we be better individuals, even as we allow you to be in control. Thank you and take charge of our lesson today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And our memory text is saying to us from John 11, 25 and 26, and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Most interesting. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Ended wow. with a question. Wow. Do we believe this? Do you believe mm -hmm. this? And just as it was a testing experience for those who were present at the time, um, mainly Mary and Martha, because as we go through the lesson, we see that this statement was made specifically to Martha and, and Mary. Uh -huh. Likewise, the question is being asked to us today. Yes. Is Jesus the resurrection and the life in your life? Mm. And do you believe it? Amen. Because it is important he who believes in me, even though he dies, he, he shall, shall live. live. Yes. And this is very important. This is very powerful and profound, we would see. Yes. So it says the Bible is clear, clear, clear that Jesus Christ is what? The eternal son. One with the father. Mm -hmm. Underived and uncreated. So he's not a created being. Certainly. Right? Jesus is the one who created all that was made. Thus, Jesus has always existed just as the Father. There never was a time when he didn't exist. Though Jesus came to this world and took upon himself our humanity, he always kept his divinity. And at specific times, Jesus said and did things that revealed this divinity. Certainly. This truth was important for John, which is why... When recounting some of Jesus' miracles, John used them to point to Christ's divinity. Jesus not only said things that revealed his divinity, but backed up his words with works that manifested his divinity. Certainly. And one of them will be in part of this lesson's um, study about Lazarus. So this week's lesson looks at three of the greatest signs of Jesus' divinity. What is striking is that in every case, some people did not believe the miracle or perceive its significance. For some, it was a time of turning away from Jesus. Hmm. For others, a time for deepening blindness. Certainly. And for others, a time to plot Jesus' death. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. And for others, a time to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. So people responded to what Jesus did in different ways. Certainly, yeah? certainly. And but we uh, seem to have more negatives than positive, huh? Well, <laughs> we would understand that throughout Jesus' life, Satan was there to plague every step of the way. Mm. And because of this, regardless of what Jesus did, 
Yeah. He would have ensured that he planted in the hearts and minds of men things that they would want to oppose. True. So when we look at the feeding of the 5,000, mm -hmm. which is found in uh, John chapter 6, verses 4 to 5, mm -hmm. we see a very interesting story there. And it, you, it makes you wonder. Well, in truth and in fact, the whole story is written in John 6, 1 to 14. Yes, you get is. the entire story. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we look at John 6, 4 and 5, it says, the Jewish Passover festival was near. And when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Hmm. No, uh, this is an interesting question mm -hmm. because people had to be fed. Yes. But if we, we were to look back at the, 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 the fast over, right, we would have seen whereby in the past people were fed. Mm -hmm. And we know that God always provides food at yeah. the time when it is needed. So as we, we, we look at uh, Sunday's lesson, we see it said in John 6, 4 to 5, the apostle goes out of his way to state that the timing of the feeding of the 5,000 was near the Passover. Yes. The Passover was a commemoration of the deliverance of the Israel from Egypt. The Passover lamb took the place of the death of the firstborn. This sacrifice symbolized the death of Jesus in our behalf mm -hmm. on the cross. The punishment that we deserve because of our sins fell on Jesus instead. Christ, our Passover, was indeed slain for us. Yes. And, and the great controversy it says, he bore the guilt of transgression, the hiding of his father's face until his heart was broken, his life crushed out, all this sacrifice was made that sinners might be redeemed. Amen. So, um, according to what you were saying, the entire um, caption is really from 1 to 14, right? Mm -hmm. But you, we focus there on 4 and 5. Yes. Right? And it really speaks about those persons who gathered together, um, came from near and far. Right? And this multitude. And when Jesus had asked um, about feeding, where shall we ask Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asks, it says, he asks this only to test them. For he already had in mind what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but definitely Philip didn't know, right? But like most human beings, he said to him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. And I just have a bite, right? Certainly. So another of the disciples, which is Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. And he said, here's a boy with five small barley loaves. No, we mm -hmm. didn't just say five barley loaves. He said five small barley loaves mm -hmm. and two small fish. Mm -hmm. But how far will they go among so many? Mm -hmm. So they continue to see it in our natural eyes, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to them, have the, have the people sit down. Now, if you were there and Jesus said, after you said that, and Jesus says, have the people sit Crazy. down. You, you, based on, on logic that he had done, you would say, you should, you should say, well, he probably has something in store. But if we're looking at other than our own eyes, you say, but he crazy? Have the people sit down to do what? Because we only have these five small loaves and mm -hmm. these two fish, right? However, there was, it says there was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down and the number was about 5,000 men. So that's just 5,000 men, but you have women and children, right? And then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted, right? He did the same with the fish. And when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. Now, sometimes I say we waste a lot of stuff because... All the time. <laughs> yeah, because we have things and we say... God help me, I have not, uh, we, we don't have things to eat, uh, but when you go in your fridge or, or so and you look around your cupboard, you see you have things, sometimes in your fridge you have stuff that you prepare, you probably didn't even have a bite out of it. 
And you put it in the fridge and you start from something else, somewhere, but you're saying to Jesus that you don't have. But Jesus says, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So sometimes we are really wasting things. So they gather them and fill what? Twelve baskets. So from five loaves and two fish, you have twelve baskets of fragments. And it says that what Jesus did was what? Break it and gave thanks. So sometimes that's what we need to do. By faith, break it, give thanks to God and say, God, you have your way and do what only you can do. Right? And it says that, um, so they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. And after the people saw the sign that Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is, a, is the prophet who has come into the world. Hmm. Right? So as they saw this miracle, some believe. We know that all would not have believed. Right? And then there was a question that was asked, what parallels can be found here between Jesus and Moses? Right? And we were looking at Jesus goes up on a mountain, mm -hmm. right? As Moses went up to Sinai. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus tests Philip as the Israelites were tested in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And then the multiplication of the loaves is reminiscent of the manna. Now, when I, when I read about the loaves, mm -hmm. the manna came to my mind, how Certainly. God provided manna for them, right? Then the gathering of the leftover food um, harks back to the Israelites gathering the manna. The 12 baskets of leftovers are picked up the same number as the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the people comment that Jesus is the prophet coming into the world parallel to the prophet like Moses predicted in Deuteronomy 18, 15. Amen, so amen. all of this points to Jesus as a new Moses come to deliver his people. Certainly. You know, what, what is interesting about it is that Jesus made sure mm -hmm. that what was needed was being provided. Amen. Now, it is interesting when we, we look at the whole scenario that existed because, as the, 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 the uh, narrative says, there was a little boy. Yes. So the food was just enough for that little, little boy, boy yeah. right? Two loaves. Five loaves. Five loaves, two fishes. Fish. Uh -huh. Two, two fish, two as fish. we see, uh -huh. right? No. When we look at that, that was just sufficient for one person. Mm -hmm. But you see, when you're dealing with God, he divides, multiply at the same time. Yes. He subtracts and adds at the same time. Yes, he does. You see, you cannot put measures upon God hmm. and God's uh, ability to increase and multiply and supply needs. Because True. here it was, there was a need. And the only way that need could have been met was through a sign, or what we say, a miracle yeah. by Jesus. So, yeah. these people had no thing better to say at the end of the day. This man has to be a prophet, right? Because who could do that? Hmm. How could something like that happen? It was inconceivable. Yes. No, we see 5,000 men, and as we usually would calculate and say, it could be more than 15,000 people who were there the day or close to that amount. But the fact is that he was able to bring food and supply food as people needed. Yes. Just as he did in the wilderness, mm -hmm. the people needed food. And they supply, yes, they got food was being supplied. Today, we see the feeding of the 5,000 represented the same quality, the same pattern that existed way back then. True, true. It says also that John was showing Jesus not only doing signs and wonders, mm -hmm. but doing signs and wonders that, in their context, should have had special meaning for the Jewish people. Certainly. Jesus was pointing them, in essence, to his own divinity. Mm -hmm. So when, when you see this happen, and you see five loaves and two fish mm -hmm. sharing for multitudes of people, mm -hmm. it's not like a household or maybe two households. It's thousands of people. Imagine that. And, and he didn't go anywhere. It, it was done in plain sight, right? Mm -hmm. So there was no hiding of it, right? You of yourself must ask that question, you know? This cannot be done other than by someone who is... Definitely divine. Certainly. Definitely has the power of God with him. Yeah? So that should have been 
um, sufficient for them to know that he was and is the son of God. As the, 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 uh, John goes on, the question is how did the people respond to his miracle and how did Jesus use this to try to teach them who he was? And uh, the, the answer comes more specifically from John 26 to 36, mm -hmm. where it states, Jesus answered, Verily, truly, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Mm -hmm. Do not work for food that's spoiled, but for food that endures to eternal life, which mm. the Son of Man will give you. For in him, God, the Father, has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works of God, the works God requires? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Verily I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you, who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life. Yeah, and gives life to the world. Mm. So they said, always give us this bread. And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Yes. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. Hmm. You know what is interesting about this whole uh, statement that Jesus would have made to them? Yeah. was the fact that they saw Jesus in action. They saw what Jesus did. They accepted the fact that it, he must be a prophet. There mm -hmm. must be some uh, indication of divinity in him. Yes. Yet, they did not believe him, but they were looking for another miracle. He had already performed a miracle, a miracle in their sorry, present. Yeah. Yeah. So, he is telling them, I am the bread that came down from heaven. He is also telling them, don't uh, hold on to the bread that they could eat. Mm -hmm. Believe in the one who was sent from above. This mm -hmm. is all he was telling them because he wanted them to understand it is not only about the physical, it has a greater spiritual dimension. Yes, but you see, because their mindset was that they were looking for an earthly Messiah. True. They weren't looking for was um, Jesus is divine. But they, their um, thought and desire in their heart was that, hey, if this Messiah comes, he will deliver us from this Roman oppression, mm -hmm. right? So their focus was not on um, so much believing, was it asking still for signs. And according to you, that was significant enough for them to believe. Certainly. Right? But because their heart was set on an earthly Messiah, they could not contemplate what Jesus was doing, right? And it says two of the most difficult things encountered in war are feeding the troops and caring for the wounded and dead. Mm -hmm. And by his miracles, that is Jesus' miracles, Jesus showed that he could do both of them. Hmm. But that's not why Jesus had come. And that wasn't the purpose of his miracle. Instead, the account of the feeding of the 5,000 provided the opportunity to illustrate that Jesus is, as you said, the bread of life, mm -hmm. that God himself came down from heaven. And he says, I am the bread of life, right? He who comes to me shall never hunger. But they weren't so focused on that at all. They would just focus on, listen, we need deliverance. We'll eat what you provide, but we are looking for one that will take us out of this oppression of the um, Roman Empire, right? So it says, um, this is the first of seven I am statements in the Gospel of John, where I am is connected with some predicted, which is bread of life, right? The good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life, right? But why don't we believe? We don't believe because 
of our self mindset that that desire we have in our hearts so no matter what jesus did it was difficult from for them to believe it says their dissatisfied hearts queried why if jesus could perform so many wondrous works as he as they had witnessed could he not give health strength and riches to all his people free them from their oppressors and exalt them to power and honor and that is where their mindset was it is so unfortunate that right before their very eyes they were seeing jesus doing things that they never experienced before blessing people healing people right supplying people with food yet they still did not understand who jesus was because in their mind's eye they were looking for another individual yes the messiah was expected in a certain way. Hmm. They were looking for material benefit That's instead it. of yeah. truth mm -hmm. that endures to eternal life. Yes. And this is a trap that we all potentially face if we are not careful. careful yes. And this is dangerous because when we look at the carnal or allow our carnality to take over, we miss all the spiritual blessings yeah because it oh. said the, the fact that he claimed to be the scent of god and yet refused to be israel's king was a mystery which they could not realize and understand could not phantom his refusal was misinterpreted many concluded that he dared not assert his claims because he himself doubted as to the divine character of his mission which was error thus they opened their hearts to unbelief and the seed with Satan had sown both fruit of its kind in misunderstanding and defection. Yep. So they were looking for that material benefit instead of truth that endures to eternal life. So John continues to write, and uh, in John chapter 9, verses 1 to 16, we have a very interesting story, a story that has been told over and over again, mm -hmm. right? Uh, no, I may not choose to go through all yeah, yeah. the reading because the entire story is in John uh, 9 or 1 to 41. Mm -hmm. But this is interesting. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. Yes. Note, man blind from, from birth. birth yeah. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, this is a very... No. When you look at it from a cursory point of view, it is not a fair question. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. How could the guy who was born blind sin? He was, he was born blind, <laughs> no? right? So, so if you want to ask if the parents sin, yes, you yeah, might. That, that would be but a, be a more question. reasonable question. Yeah. Now, in verse 3, it says, Neither his, this man nor his parents sin, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God... Mm -hmm. Right, so that the works of God might be displayed in Him. You, as long as it is day, we must do the works of Him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. True. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. After saying this, He spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, He told him. Wash in the pool of Siloam, or which also means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing yeah, yes. his neighbors, right? His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging, asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he, he was. Others said, No. He only looks like him. <laughs> but he himself insisted, I, I am, am the, the man. man yeah. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Amen. Where's this man? They asked him. I don't know. They brought to the they brought him to the Pharisees, to the Pharisees the man whom had been blind. Now the day 
on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eye was a Sabbath. Hmm. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. <coughs> Sorry. He put mud on my eyes. The man replied, and I washed and now I see. So what the Pharisees said, this man is not of, from God. For he does not keep the imagine, Sabbath. Imagine, imagine. But others ask, how can a man perform such signs? So they were divided. Mm -hmm. And they this said <laughs> that he was a sinner. Yeah? So this how? was a very interesting narrative mm -hmm. because when you look at the whole experience, a man born blind was made to see. And the emphasis would be on the fact that the healing was on the Sabbath. Yes. And that Jesus wasn't keeping the Sabbath. And it, 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 it is a pity that we don't understand or people don't understand that God says the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. And he also says the Sabbath is a day that you should do good. good. Yeah. So healing on the Sabbath had nothing to do with not keeping the Sabbath. It was in the own prejudice and the laws created by the Pharisees themselves, which they used to accuse Jesus. Right, but the um, disciples, they, based on the question they asked Jesus, they seem to have a connection between someone being sick and sin. Mm -hmm. So it means if you got sick, well, at least that kind of sick, blind or, or have some deformity or whatever it is, it had to be because um, you committed some sin, which to me kind of relates to the story of Job. And his friends, okay. because they had said, you know, what, mm -hmm. what sin did he commit when um, the enemy attacked him and his family? Certainly, right? certainly. So it, there seemed to be some sort of a mental thought that, you know, if you become sick or you start to have problems and stuff like that, it means that you would have done something wrong. My, my thing now is, do people see things that way still? If yes. something starts to happen to a, a member or so... Is it that you commit a sin? Well, the thing about it, uh, if, when you look at it very carefully, you would have seen that there were certain Old Testament uh, laws that prefigured the thinking, right, that was involved. But my issue was not necessarily the fact that uh, it could have been inherited, mm -hmm. as such that the parents could have sinned, mm -hmm. but the fact that they, how could they have involved the man in the, in the whole scenario, knowing that he was born blind. If he was born blind, it is no way that he was a sinner. Obviously. Right? So it, 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 they, they actually threw the, the whole argument out. It was too skewed in, in this way. Right? But uh, there were texts in the Old Testament that suggested that uh, the ch children could suffer from the activities of, of the parents. parents yeah. And uh, we find that you find text in Exodus 20, verse 5, uh, 2 Kings 15, 5, 15 to 27, 2 Kings 15, verse 5. I, I'm just going to read that for emphasis. Mm -hmm. The Lord afflicted the king with leprosy until the day he died. Yeah. And he lived in a separate house. Jotan, the king's son, had, had charge of the palace and govern the people of the land. Now, we are seeing that this could be misplaced as far as the visitation of the, 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 the parents sin upon the children. Okay. Because there's a text which says, until the third and fourth generation, mm -hmm. sins of the father will visit the children until the third and fourth generation. But we see that that was misapplied in this case because uh, we look at some other situ scenarios, example in Second Chronicles chapter 26, 16 to 21, he said, but after Uzzah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Hmm. Azariah the priest with 80 other co co courageous priests of the Lord followed him into the temple, right? No. 
followed him in, they confronted King Uzziah and said, It is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That is for the priests, the descendants of Aaron. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing descendants yeah. having certain, certain privileges and situation. But if you were to look uh, down at 19, Uzziah had a censer in his hand and ready to burn incense, became angry while he was raging at the priests in their presence before the incense altar in the Lord's temple, lepros leprosy broke out on his forehead. When Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy on his forehead. So they hurried him out. Indeed, he himself was eager to leave because the Lord had afflicted him with, with leprosy. King Uzziah, hmm. until the day he died, had leprosy until the day he died, he lived in a separate house. Leprous, right? Uh, leprous, banned from the temple of the Lord. Jotan, his son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. Now, there is no evidence that Jotan had leprosy. Okay. So, uh, they, 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 they would have totally misrepresented the scriptures relative to the, the uh, passing on of sickness, of sickness. unto okay. uh, the next generation. Right? Well, remember, um, in, in, in one instance, they would use a thing. Um, I think great misunderstanding of what, what was being done. But it was their way of... I don't know, kind of getting out of really believing or, or, or declaring that they believe. So they held on to any situation that they be believed or knew that could kind of explain away according to them what was happening. But it said that Jesus set the matter straight, not denying any connection between sin and suffering, but mm -hmm. in this case, pointing to a higher purpose. And that higher purpose was what? That God will be glorified by the healing. Mm -hmm. So the account contains certain affinities to the creation story. That of God's forming the first man from the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm. So Jesus took the mud, he spat on it, and okay. then made a clay, right? Mm -hmm. Just as Jesus makes clay to provide a blind man what was missing from the womb. So it says in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, miracle stories follow a common pattern. An expression of the problem. So first we have whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. The bringing of the individual to Jesus. Mm -hmm. The cure and then recognition of the cure with praise to God. Amen. So those are four um, areas mm -hmm. in, in, for each miracle that you will see. So it, it's not just well, one thing alone. But the end result is that God will be praised. Yeah? Amen. 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 Now it, it is a very interesting that at the end of the day... Because here was a blind man who could see, and he could see Jesus for who he was. was yes. On the other hand, the people who could have seen before, one, they couldn't recognize the man. Yes. The same man who they used to be seeing, begging all the time, they couldn't recognize him. So who had the doubts and so on? They couldn't recognize that Jesus was, again, demonstrating his divinity by healing the man's eye, yes. restoring sight to the blind. So they start questioning whether Jesus was of was God, God because yeah. he broke the Sabbath. Yeah. Now, we see the Pharisees really made us think of it, hmm. right? When uh, we look further in John chapter 9, verse 17 to 34, here now they decide... Okay, we are not satisfied with what's going on, so let us talk to the parents. Hmm. So they've gone back to find out, what is happened? this yeah. really your son? son? Yes. And she said, yes, that's my son. And then they went further. They went further to find out from them what really happened. Mm -hmm. No. These folks, because of what they knew was going to happen, refused to try to answer the question, they said, listen, my son is of age, talk to my talk son. To my son yes. and, and this is where, <laughs> this is where we should learn the lesson mm -hmm. that when situations come up, mm -hmm. instead of us putting our mouth into exactly. the picture, let 
individuals speak, speak to them. the person yes. who is involved. Yes. First, according to the principle, you speak to the person yes. that is involved. Yes, yes. And then you can go about yeah. widening the scope. So here she's, the parents told him, yes, speak to the him. guy. Yeah. He's of age. Yeah. No, and I they were, love how he de dealt with them. He, no, what was interesting, not only that, they knew that if they had recognized Jesus for whom he was, mm -hmm. they would have been put out of the synagogue. And yeah. that had a lot hmm. of implications, right? A lot of implications because being put out of the synagogue would have mean they could have been ostracized from society. They even yes. could have been killed, mm -hmm. right? So they knew the implication. This is why they said, speak to the son. And yes. of course, the son dealt with the situation. Yeah. It said, then they turn again to the blind man. And what have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. Right? So according to you, the blind man could see mm -hmm. that he is special, True. different. Mm -hmm. But they who had sight couldn't see that. But Certainly. they saw, you know, they just choose not to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. They still did not believe that he had been blind. So even though they asked the parents... They, it's saying that they still didn't believe that the man was blind mm -hmm. and had received the sight until they sent for the man's, well, they sent for the parents. Mm -hmm. And it says, is this your son? They ask him, is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? And they went on, right? So we know he's our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. Mm -hmm. but, how, but how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. And that's when they told him to ask him, right? It says... Uh, and verse 22, his parents said this because, the, yes, according to you, they were afraid of the leaders and um, they didn't want to be ostracized. But it says that that was why his parents said he is of age and asked him. So a second time, they summoned the man himself who had been blind. And it says, give glory to God by telling the truth. So I love this piece here. And they said, we know this man is a sinner. Imagine. He replied, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, mm -hmm. I was blind, but now I see. So and that's me. why I said I loved how he dealt with them. Mm -hmm. Because he, he seemed at all corners and every instance to kind of put them in a place kind of way, right? Mm -hmm. And then they asked him, what did he do to you? What do you expect him to do to him? He said before, how did he open your eyes? And he answered, I have told you already. Mm -hmm. And you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? That's like Jesus saying, you know, I gave you miracles mm -hmm. and you didn't believe, but you want another sign? Sure I, do you want to become his disciples too? That was a real good question he asked them. Then they hurled insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. Mm -hmm. And the man answered, no, that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, he was really good. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to what? To the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steep in sin at birth. Imagine that. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Here now. I, I, I was... <laughs> no, it, 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 it just shows wow. you, it just shows you how the devil could work in the lives of yes. individuals to do things that it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. what, for what reason were they throwing him out? Because he told them the truth. Yes. And we must always remember that everything in the scripture points to the conflict that exists between truth and and error, error mm -hmm. between God and Satan. And this is what was being displayed here, whereby Satan was showing his ugly head, his ugly head in these Pharisees or those individuals who he had asked in this question. Because, <laughs> see, they were not seen. No. They were blind. <laughs> the blind man received sight. Yeah. And he didn't only receive physical sight, he received spiritual, spiritual sight, sight as well. And may God help us that we obtain spiritual eyesight yes. so that we would see our true condition. We would see what 
God is mm. or what Jesus has been or is to us and it will propel us to do the will of the Lord. Which cements what you're saying here. It says, so scary here is the spiritual blindness of the religious leaders. A once blind beggar can declare, since the world began, it has been unheard of mm -hmm. that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And yet the religious leaders, the spiritual guides of a nation, which is important, the ones who should have been the first to recognize Jesus and accept him as the Messiah, they, despite all the powerful evidence, cannot see it or they don't really want to see it. Certainly. Yep. Certainly. So we come to the last miracle, no one. That is a miracle with, uh, mm -hmm. with, with, with Lazarus. Lazarus yes. Now we all know the story of Lazarus, mm -hmm. whereby Lazarus got sick, his yeah. sisters. Mary and Martha, they sent to Jesus, letting Jesus know that his friend Lazarus was, was sick. That is found in John 11. And whilst, whilst Jesus was there, he got the message. He told his disciples, hey, mm -hmm. right? He told them that uh, Lazarus was not well. Yeah. But he knew for a fact what was happening with Lazarus. But again, yes. what Jesus has, did yes. was to be able to show Mm -hmm. The will of God. Yes. Amen. Right? So he allowed Lazarus to die. Yes. And when he came, Mary and Martha was in distress. distress <laughs> and um, Martha told him if he had come before, Lazarus oh, yes. would not have died and so on. And we have the memory text which says, right? The memory text which we had this, uh, this week. Mm hmm. Which That's took, 11, 25, and 26. Right. Um, Jesus said to her, I am the what? Resurrection, Resurrection and, the, and life. the life. He who believes in me, though mm -hmm. he may die, he shall live. Again. And whoever lives mm -hmm. and believes in me shall never die. And then he asks, do you believe this? So, no, no, the thing about it is that uh, Martha thought that this Jesus was speaking about the future, yeah. which uh, he, she would have been uh, aware of. But here he was about to perform a very important miracle. But Martha had no idea what was going what was on. Happening, yeah. We hear about Jesus wept, John 11.35, everyone mm -hmm. knows that particular text. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was about to perform a miracle. And, this, and when he got to the graveside, and he told them to remove the stone, and so on, the place where Lazarus was, was laid, mm -hmm. they said, it's four days it's now. Four days, yes. The man it's would rotting. start rotting. Yes. So, it doesn't make sense. Hmm. But Jesus told them, remove the stone, and we know the rest is history. Yes. Because he called out to Lazarus, and Lazarus came forth. Yes, amen. Now, very interestingly, it's the point whereby Jesus could take us from a state whereby we are dead completely mm -hmm. and return us to life. Amen. And amen. this is important, and this was a very important uh, miracle. But you know something? Because Jesus rose uh, allowed Lazarus to be raised to life, you know he was being accused subsequently. Hmm. The Pharisees again was on his case. Yes. As a matter of fact, Jesus was seen as a, a threat yes. because of what he would have done. Yeah, when he had become more popular than them and on, they were only concerned about the earthly things, right? Mm -hmm. But Jesus was kept pointing to his father and to his and to the father's goodness and the power that the father has that he's executing, right? And it says this miracle more than any other mm -hmm. points to Jesus as a life giver. If you could raise the dead, then yes, right? As God himself. It provides strong support for John's theme that Jesus is the divine son of God mm -hmm. and that by believing, we can have life through him. Amen. So, however, by the time we get to the end of this incredible story, it says, in which many who saw believe, a powerful but sad irony unfolds. Jesus shows that he can bring the dead back to life and yet these men think they can, they, that they can stop him by killing him. Imagine if he that. is the one given life, you think you could take his? Certainly. How can you? So, so he, yeah. Jesus had to lay down his life yes. eventually. Yeah. So as we look at these three miracles today, you want to thank God Amen. for the lessons that they would have brought out. Can you just close with a word of prayer? Sure. We just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Because he is the life giver. 
He's the source of life, as you, has, you have indicated. And we need to keep our eyes fixed on him, but open our hearts to the pleading of the Holy Spirit that will reveal those things that you want your children to know and to trust in. We give you all the praise and the glory. We ask that you continue to shed your light upon us and those who listen and cause them to read your word, God. Let them read your word. Read the word of God. There is life in it. And there is that um, promise of eternal life. So we give you thanks. We give you praise. And we ask, oh Lord God, that you take full and total control as we continue to live from day to day, experiencing the goodness of our Heavenly Father through His Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to all. Amen. Amen.